Okay, um, got a lot of good comments from the uh, power supply series I did. Uh, so I thought I would do a series on switchers. Uh, these are switching power supplies. And uh, they look quite complicated, but the basic idea of them is similar uh, all across the board. So um, I wanted to find a, uh, a switching power supply that we could uh, go through together and understand. Um, this one is not it. <laughs> so I looked around on uh, probably eBay and uh, I found this little guy, which is super cute. Uh, he is a uh, 12 volt, two amp. Now, if you go into eBay and you look for switching power supplies, a lot of times there'll be one vendor who like, sells like 24 different types of power supplies. You just tell it which voltage you want, what current you want, you want a single output, double output, all kinds of stuff, and they're super cheap, you know? Even the big fancy ones are like 20 bucks. This is a, a little tiny one. This one is a 12 volts at two amps. And uh, I thought that would be a good one to uh, a good one to go through. And they all look very similar. They're in these bent metal ca bent metal cages, and uh, they're actually quite nice for the. And they're super cheap. I mean, they're super cheap, and, and so they seem to they seem to hold up okay. But I found this one, so this is the one that we're going to be going through. Uh, this one is uh, uh, AC input, 100 volts, 240 volts, plus or minus. 15% DC output 12 volts at 1.25 amps so one and a quarter amps and uh, yeah so uh, what I want to do is we'll open this one up take a look at it uh, we will reverse engineer it uh, we will draw a schematic for it and then we'll go through the schematic and I'll try to instruct everyone on how switching power supplies work and once you get the basic ideas then you can apply that to maybe maybe a bigger one. Now this one's fancy. This one is uh, uh, five volts at 12 amps. Yeah, 12 amps, pretty heavy duty. So it's got a lot beefier components. It's got a, a fancier input section and stuff. But the way that this operates is going to be exactly the same as the way this operates. So uh, so let's get started. Let's uh, let's open this thing up and uh, and uh, see what's inside. Okay. So the, uh, the top just pops off. It's just uh, held in there by friction. <laughs> and then there's one screw, and you take that screw out, and then the uh, circuit board will come out, okay? So this is all just uh, metal. And it's not used as a heat, heat sink. Uh, it doesn't do anything at all. It's just a RF shield, uh, I suppose. And uh, more importantly, uh, so you don't get your fingers in there and get electrocuted. <laughs> so. Uh, so this is the board. Let me uh, let me get rid of these things. All right. So this is going to be the circuit board, and uh, it looks pretty simple. Oh, that's strange. My camera, my camera timed out. I I don't know why it shut down. Anyway, um, let's um, let's start drawing the circuit. Uh, there's not much of the PC board. It's a single-sided PC board, so it's easy to see the traces and easy th easy to see where things go. So let's start let's start drawing a schematic for this thing, and then I think we'll have a better understanding of of uh, how one, how uh, things get from one side to the other side. Okay, let's take this a step at a time. So I've traced out the front end of the circuit uh, about that m oops about that much of it. Okay. Um, the bridge rectifier and this uh, uh, capacitor and the fuse and then the connection here, okay? So that looks like this. The AC comes in, it goes into the bridge rectifier. All of the, all of the positive things go in the positive direction and all the negative things go in the negative direction. So we end up with this uh, capacitor here. And we have a pretty nice capacitor. Uh, let's see what value it is. It is a 10 microfarad. but at 450 volts, so lots of volts there. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's measure the voltage that we get here. Uh, we can measure the AC voltage coming in and we can measure the DC voltage coming out, okay? So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn it on. Uh, we, do get a, we do get a green light. You can just, oops, let me move this up. 
Uh, I think you can see the green light down here, so it is working. And in fact, let's measure the output since we're here. Uh, let's go ahead and measure measure the output, and we're getting 12 volts out. 12 volt output, I guess, minus over this direction. We're getting 12.1 uh, volts. 12.1 volts out. That's good. Okay, so let's take a look at the input. We'll go to AC on our meter. We'll measure the AC, so be careful about this. Uh, so we're measuring 119.4 volts input, so that's the AC coming in. And then it's going to go through this bridge rectifier and it will get rectified, so we'll go to volts. And I know that ground is right here, and plus is right here. And I don't want to zap myself. There. So we are measuring 164 volts, okay? 164 volts. All right, so let's uh, write a couple of these things down. Turn this off so I don't zap myself. All right, so we have 164 volts. Volts DC. We had 119 volts AC coming in. All right, so 164 volts. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our AC, we turned it into DC. Now we're going to take the DC and we're going to turn it back into AC again. Okay, so the next part of our circuit now looks like this. Okay, it's a transformer. So we have AC on this side, which means we have AC on this side, and then it gets rectified. Instead of a fancy bridge rectifier, it's just a single rectifier and uh, we will have a DC voltage again, all right? And so how do we generate AC volts here? Now, if you watch my series on DC to DC converter, okay, uh, you can bring this down and you can uh, short these together out. Remember when I tap the wire, you go, go here and you go, go tap, 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 and that would create a, uh, an alternating signal here, which would cause an alternating signal here, which would get rectified and cause a DC over here. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we're gonna use a fancy chip, okay? And so we have a, we have a, a fancy chip to do that. Um, I won't draw it in yet. Um, one of the things though that the circuit has that we have to explain is whenever you have a uh, coil and you let it go, it's going to generate what's called back EMF. It's going to generate a negative pulse. Remember when we when I did the tap, 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 it created that big spike? Well, we're going to get a spike here. We're going to get good current flow, but then when we release it, we're going to get, whew, we're going to get a big spike. And we have to, we have to kill that spike, and we're going to put a... A lot of times you'll see this off of... Um, on motors or on solenoids and stuff, on relays. Very often you'll have a, a diode, a reverse diode, uh, across the uh, across this winding. Now they do have a diode in there, but they made it a little fancier. Uh, they went ahead and they put a resistor here too to limit the current. Okay, and so they have that going uh, that going across there. And then they got even a little fancier than that, and they said, "Well, we want to limit the current, but we don't want to slow it down. And so we're going to." Put a capacitor here that will be really good at taking off the edges. It will allow large currents to flow, but only on really, really high frequencies, only on that sharp edge. As soon as we get rid of that high frequency sharp edge, we'll let this resistor do its job. And this, this will be our snubber circuit, right? So that's what they have in there. So that's what that is. All right, so now we have, need some way of uh, tying this to ground and pulsing it on and off, okay? And so if we take a look at our circuit now, we've explained, where's, where's, where's my pointer? We've explained all of the input and we've explained the uh, snubber circuit over here. And now uh, we're, we end up with an IC. There's an eight pin IC here. And here's our transformer, okay? The transformer's here. The transformer has its diode, which is down here. That's this diode. And it has its uh, uh, capacitor and in this particular design, it actually has two capacitors. Okay. 
So they did that to make the capacitor bigger, right? So that's what that's what these two capacitors are. are. These two here are those two. So we almost have the whole thing already, but... Um, okay, so we have an IC that's going to do all the magic. The IC is going to have an FET on it that does the pull-down. It's going to be pulsing this thing, but it also is going to have the feedback loop, and it also is going to have the oscillator. Remember, I had a 555 timer that was going tick, 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 and then we had some circuit that said, you know, don't tick or tick, right? And we had some kind of feedback, and that's all going to happen in this IC. So this IC is made for this purpose. So uh, let's go ahead and draw that in next. So I've drawn in the circuit. Uh, it's an eight pin device. Okay, so this is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pin seven and eight are tied together and they have this FET that's inside and that FET is going to uh, pull down on this coil and to ground. So it's gonna complete the circuit, right? This will be the, the circuit here. And it'll go tap, 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 tap. So this will be doing the tapping, this, this uh, uh, built-in built FET, okay? Now some uh, power supplies like, like these big beefy ones, they'll have external power, power transistors because um, they're really, really big and they need to be big. But this one, this is good enough for uh, one or two amps. And so it's built into, the, built into the IC, but it has that transistor in there, okay? It also has the oscillator, it has a whole bunch of other things. Now to make this thing work, uh, you have to put a, uh, you have to put a capacitor here. And then the only other thing is this pin. So this is not used, and this is not used, and this is not used. But this is gonna be the feedback. This is the one that tells it whether you're too high or too low. That's gonna be our, our feedback, so we'll draw that in later. But you get the idea now uh, that we have DC, and now we're gonna turn it back into, EC, back into AC by having this transistor and going tap, 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 tap. And then we're going to then turn it back into DC again this way, and these will actually go to the outside. So that is actually this little green connector on the back, and this is our, our plus connection, and this is our minus connection. So this is where we're gonna get our 12 volts, okay? 12 volts over here. All right, so we basically have the whole circuit now. Um, there's very little else except for this feedback, okay? We need to figure out how to do this feedback. And we have to be very careful because we have really high voltage things over here. We have very low voltage things over here, so we don't kind of, we don't really want to connect them together. Remember, this is 164 volts over here, and uh, we want to we want to isolate those. So we want to isolate those. So how do you isolate something? Well, you can use an optocoupler. Okay. So this here, what it needs to do is you need to pull down on this wire in order to regulate. And so uh, we're going to come and we're going to put in a transistor. Okay. So this is what the uh, uh, this is what the circuit needs. All right. And then they want to uh, make that nice a nice voltage, a nice smooth voltage as well. So they put a capacitor here. Okay. So this is how you regulate this guy with this. Right. All right. But this. we can put in an optocoupler, okay? This can actually be light, a light photodiode, okay? An opto, an opto, uh, opto um, transistor. And the way that it works is there's a LED over here. And that LED outputs its light. So when the LED is on, the transistor is on, okay? And so we can control over here and it turns it into these optical signals and that'll control over here. So that's how they isolate the two halves. They use an optocoupler, okay? So the optocoupler, there's my pointer, all right. So the, this is the IC, the, uh, the DK, can I zoom in? That's all I can do. Uh, this is the DK1203. And this is the optocoupler right here. This is the optocoupler, it has four pins. Uh, two pins here and two pins here. So the diode's over here and the transistor's over here. So that is the optocoupler. All right, so now 
All we have to do now is figure out how do we get the right signal? How do we tell this guy he's either too, too big a voltage or too little of a voltage? And so uh, let's figure out how to do that, all right? All right, so this is the data sheet for the uh, uh, controller chip and they give a sample circuit here. And this sample circuit looks almost identical to our circuit. It's pretty much identical on the uh, left-hand side, on the high voltage side. It's a little different on the low voltage side, but they tell you how to use this optocoupler. Uh, here's the LED part of the optocoupler, and here's the phototransistor part of the optocoupler. And so we've already drawn this in. Um, but this is how they turned on and off their LED and monitored the voltage. So they wanted to monitor, they wanted to regulate to 12 volts. And so they used an 11 volt zener. All right. So if this voltage gets high enough, it needs to get above 11 volts and it needs to get above the forward voltage of the LED. So let's say the LED is a, a one volt forward voltage. And then you have 12, 11 plus one is 12. You'll get current flow in the system and that LED will turn on. So the higher you go, the brighter that LED will become. And if that LED becomes very, very bright, then it will turn on that transistor in the optocoupler, right? This is part of the optocoupler. There's a, uh, there's a transistor over here, remember? And um, so if it gets too bright, it turns this on harder and harder, and that will tell the uh, modulator, um, the, uh, the controller that has the uh, tickle, tickle, tickle thing to stop, right? You're, you're getting too much voltage, and that's the way it will modulate. It does a pulse width modulation scheme. Um, and that's how it will regulate by this method. So this is quite easy to understand, right? 11 volts, if it's bigger than 11 volts and bigger than a forward diode, then it turns on and you can imagine how this, how this works, right? But it's a little hard to adjust, right? You kind of would like to have maybe an adjustable zener here or something, right? And that's just too hard to do. Uh, so they came up with a clever circuit and uh, the circuit's a little bit complicated, but if you remember in, I don't remember which, video it was in, I talked about a TL431. Uh, and it was a funny part, it looked like a Zener diode, but it had a control pin on it, okay? And it was like two and a half volt device. It wanted, it wanted this control voltage to be two and a half volts. If this was ground and this was two and a half volts, if you tie these together, the output would be two and a half, okay? But if you put a, a divider here, if you put a, a resistor here and a resistor here, and these were both the same resistor, then you'd get five volts out here. It did whatever it needed to do in order to get this two and a half volts. And so this particular um, circuit uses a, uh, a TL431. Now that's a very, very stable part. And so you have a good voltage reference in order to control this. So this will be able to be uh, tuned in very, very accurately. And I uh, will draw this circuit and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so we're gonna use this part in a, a little bit of a strange way. Um, we are going to use that control pin and we need to put two and a half volts on that control pin, okay? And we're gonna be monitoring our 12 volts, okay? So we need a resistive divider that gives us two and a half volts. Now, if this two and a half volts gets a little too high, it will, it will start drawing current through this device. And if it goes below two and a half volts, then it will stop current in this device. So that's the way this is, that's the way this is going to operate. So you can see that we're gonna have this divider on our 12 volts, and we're gonna be able to set this two and a half volts. In fact, one of these is gonna be a potentiometer, and that's right down here. That sets our voltage, we can adjust it, and that will be here. So this resistive chain, all its function is to take our 12 volts and regulate it to two and a half and do that by adjusting this uh, resistive divider. Once we have our two and a half volts, now we have this section here where we either have current or we don't have current. And guess what? 
we can put in our, our LED in this chain. So if this thing starts to conduct current, our LED will turn on, okay? And so that's what the circuit looks like. So let me, let me see if I can draw in the circuit. Okay, I didn't draw it the best way I could, uh, but I did fit it on the page. And, and uh, uh, it's not too important to understand exactly how this thing works. It's, what's really important to understand is that this is how the regulation happens. That you somehow you turn this LED on, it turns this transistor on, and this thing stops pulsing, right? And so the way that we're going to do that, we're going to set up this uh, voltage chain here. This goes up to the 12 volts. So we have these two resistors and then a potentiometer, and that allows us to fine tune this two and a half volts. And then the LED has a little resistor in it. I think it's a 470 ohm or something like that. And then it goes through the LED and then through this uh, uh, TL431 and then to ground. So that's how the LED gets turned down. So that's it. Um, there's only one other thing in the circuit, and that is that there is an on LED. And there is a LED in there. Uh, oops, plus 12. The LED goes in this way and goes to ground. Okay, so there's an LED. And that is all that is on this board, okay? Uh, well, there's one part left. One part left, okay, okay. But everything else, we've, we've, we've actually covered everything on the, on the board now, except for this one blue, blue capacitor, and we'll talk about it later. Um, so, so I hope you understand everything now. AC comes in, it gets into a high AC, and then we're gonna turn it into 12 volts over here, okay? And so we're gonna need, you know, somewhere around, uh, somewhere around 12 volts here. And so you can see that if we need, let's say this is 16 volts AC here, and then we rectify it down to 12 or something. Um, we have 160 volts here. We have 16 volts on this side. So this transformer has to have about a, a 10 to 1 wind ratio, okay? There's going to be 10 times more windings on this side than this side. And this 10 to 1 uh, transformer uh, takes us from this high voltage to this low voltage. Um, and... So AC, DC, AC, AC, DC. <laughs> and then the DC is monitored and then it is uh, communicated to this chip with this optocoupler, hey, you're either too high or hey, you're either too low. You know, pulse some more because you're too low or don't pulse as much because you're getting too high. And that's it. That's all there is in this thing. Um, so it's a nice little, uh, it's a nice little first circuit to look at for, uh, uh, switching power supplies and uh, get to the uh, get to the idea of what's uh, of what's going on. So hope uh, hope that helps So we have one component left to go and that is this strange blue capacitor. What is that blue capacitor doing in there? well that blue capacitor goes right here It goes across the transformer. So you can imagine the transformer windings kind of being in proximity to one another, right? They're all wound around the same core. So there is some, uh, when you put two wires together, I showed this in one of my videos, I called it a mimic. You take two wires and you spin them together, you get like a five picofarad capacitor. Um, and if you, if you look at wires close together, they're gonna have some capacitance across each other. And what does that capacitance do? Well, it lets, it lets uh, signals pass. It lets high frequency signals pass. Um, and it also uh, stops any signals that um, uh, you want to have grounded. So even if you have uh, ground on one side um, and you need a high, a high, uh, uh, high frequency path to ground on the other side, um, it'll it'll short those out. That's what this does. This this high this is a high frequency capacitor that allows these high high frequency spikes uh, to be snubbed. Well, you can kind of think of this as a snub or two, but for for a different reason. Um, this 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 side is going to create a whole bunch of high frequency noise, and that high frequency noise uh, is going to go every which way. And so it's found that um, by putting this capacitor in here and uh, shorting out any high frequencies between these two coils, 
um, you can lower the EMI uh, uh, radiation of this uh, RFI radiation of this um, of this device. So without that, it it would uh, be noisier. It would output more radio interference um, waves than having that in there. So that's why it's in there. And it has to be a high voltage capacitor and it has to be AC rated. And so they use a Y capacitor. Um, I don't know why they don't use an X capacitor, but they use a Y capacitor. So uh, Y capacitors are used to uh, filter the input uh, from RFI situations also. Um, they're generally put on the AC lines to ground, so there'd be a capacitor here to ground and a capacitor here to ground. You'd have these two ACs. Uh, that would be a Y capacitor, and then you could also put one across the two ACs directly, and that would be an X, ca X capacitor. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's what that one does. Um, I don't really have a good gut feel why it works, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's why it's in there.